Hey everyone, Catherine here with Nest Hollow, and I'm digging into the question of whether house finches are a threat to bluebirds. The reason for doing this video is that every year people observe house finches hanging around bluebirds, seemingly chasing them or following them around, or even getting really close to bluebird nest boxes. And some of you may have already experienced the tragedies with house sparrows and house wrens, so it starts to send off a lot of sirens in our minds with whether or not house finches are a problem too. Even if you are a seasoned bluebird host who already knows all about the relationship between house finches and bluebirds, you might still want to stick around because I wanted to deeply answer this question beyond my experience and the experiences of others. And in pulling up research papers, I discovered some things that I wouldn't have even thought of when first planning this video. So. How about we get into the first part of the answer by talking about this weird thing we start to see happen during the nesting season where suddenly house finches are just hanging around bluebirds, like a lot. This behavior is usually observed after the first set of bluebird babies has fledged. They're out of the nest and the mom bluebird is now either starting to build her second nest or she's laying eggs. And what'll start to happen is that suddenly there's just a bunch of house finches hanging around. And they might be getting curious and following the adult bluebirds up to the nest box or getting really close, but they don't go in. Here's the thing, along with baby bluebirds, we also have fledged house finches too. So we have kind of just this influx of birds going on, but I can't explain what it is about house finches and why they hang out with bluebirds. I really couldn't even find any peer reviewed articles about this either, but this is just something that a lot of bluebird hosts observe. So with all of these house finches suddenly following bluebirds around, do we need to worry about whether house finches will attack a bluebird or the bluebird nest box? The answer is no, not really. At least we don't really need to worry about some kind of direct threat. House finches get curious and they get close to the nest boxes, but they aren't really known for attacking bluebirds or raiding nest boxes. I haven't seen any accounts of this anyway. I will say that an individual bird can sometimes behave uncharacteristic of their species, but the common factor with house finches is that they're open cup nesters. So they're not even really competing with bluebirds for nesting spaces the way a house sparrow or house wren would be. So even though they're getting near the nest boxes and they're hanging out and following the bluebirds around, they're not a threat, not directly anyway. But that's where we get into some of these other topics that I found as a result of doing research on this. And again, I wanted to do the research on this because I didn't want to just give the plain answer and be done with it. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing anything, maybe outside of the scope of the common observations. And in doing this research, one of the things that kept coming up wasn't the relationship between bluebirds and house finches, but it was the disease symptoms of mycoplasma in bluebirds. Why this is so interesting is because house finches are a common vector, or we'll call them a vehicle, for spreading a species of bacterium called Mycoplasma gallicepticum. Hopefully I pronounced that right. For ease, I'm just gonna call it Mycoplasma from now on. Anyway, this actually originated in poultry, so turkeys and chicken. But in 1994, there were reports of house finches contracting conjunctivitis, and studies confirmed that they were susceptible to a strain of mycoplasma. For house finches, the infection is easy for bird hosts and bird watchers to spot. They're going to have a swollen red eye. It might be swollen all the way shut. I've actually come across this with a house finch and because of his health being so poor, I was actually able to get surprisingly close to him and observe the situation. The thing is, mycoplasma doesn't just infect house finches. Studies have reported this in other birds. And again, in doing research on the relationship between bluebirds and house finches, these were the papers I was finding instead. Papers about whether bluebirds got the disease, how they transmitted the disease to their young, and what the symptoms were. The problem with bluebirds is that we don't tend to see the obvious symptoms. Infection symptoms appear differently in bluebirds. For bluebirds, mycoplasma localizes in the palates of bluebirds more than it would the eye. They also found that after experimentally infecting bluebirds, infected bluebirds had lower levels of hemoglobin along with a loss in body mass. And they found that the more infected a bluebird was, the more it lost body mass. So to frame it a little differently, the less infected the bird was, the less weight it lost. And the more infected the bird was, 
the more weight it lost. The results of these studies found that despite the fact that eastern bluebirds weren't getting that visual conjunctivitis, they were still having physiological problems as a result of a mycoplasma infection. And this is so important to point out because house finches are kind of infamous for transmitting this bacterium. And we know or know now that bluebirds and house finches have a very curious relationship with each other. I think what makes this hard for us as bluebird hosts is that we're not going to see the sickness in bluebirds or other songbirds as obviously. And to take this even deeper, other studies reported disease transmission between parents and babies. So whole families can become infected and this can be fatal. So what does all of this mean though in terms of bluebirds and house finches? I think it just means that we need to be very careful and very observant. If we find a sick house finch and we're actively feeding birds, we need to absolutely pull those feeders down, wash them and sterilize them and leave them down for at least a week. That way, any kind of disease can work its way out of the population or hopefully anyway. Along with that, we need to make sure that we're cleaning out our bird baths really, really good. And also when the bluebirds fledge, even if the nest box was in really good condition, we need to clean that box out. If there is a house finch observed with a mycoplasma infection in your yard, in this case, I'd recommend cleaning your nest box using a 10% bleach solution and then just rinse and dry it really, really thoroughly. I have a couple videos about cleaning nest boxes and why you should clean nest boxes after babies fledge beyond this mycoplasma stuff. So you might want to check those out too. Now I want to shift gears a little bit because as I was doing research and planning this video, I was reminded of something else kind of important to this whole bluebird house finch relationship. And that was that in the past, I had seen posts and read web articles about house finches possibly driving out house sparrows. And really quick, if you're new to bluebirds and bluebird hosting, house sparrows are an invasive species in North America, and they're known for killing bluebirds and other native cavity nesting birds like tree swallows and chickadees. Their presence here in North America has taken a toll on some native bird populations. So that's why I wanted to bring this part up about house finches and bluebirds. So of course I dug into this topic too. Do house finches really drive out house sparrows? Is there really good evidence for that? Here's what I found. This question is going to require a lot more research and maybe it is a topic worthy of its own video. In fact, to motivate me, if you are interested in that video, put a comment below. Though I'd be careful what you wish for because it might not be more enlightening than what I'm already sharing now. The reason this is going to take more research though is because I couldn't find consensus so far in academic papers when doing some initial searches. There were studies that crowdsourced data from citizen science efforts and what those studies showed was really a cool inverse relationship. During periods where house finches were on a rise, house sparrows were on a decline. And during periods where house finches were on a decline, house sparrows were on the rise. But to me, while crowdsourced citizen science studies are interesting and eye-opening, there are just too many variables. So I did a quick dive into peer-reviewed papers, but found contradictory information. In one review style paper, I found the author cited some observations where house finches were dominant when competing with house sparrows, while other observations found them to be losing their battle with the house sparrows even raiding and destroying house finch nests. So I wouldn't go out of your way to over encourage house finches. Instead, just keep treating your yard like a normal ecosystem where you want the animals who are your natural native residents of your yard to thrive, even if that is house finches. But you don't want to over influence or create an imbalance in that ecosystem that you have within your yard. The other thing is that by artificially encouraging house finches, you could also create a better environment for that disease transmission, which is something you wouldn't want to do either. Finally, with all of this house finch and bluebird stuff, I want to point out too, and I probably should have said this earlier, but house finches are actually not native in certain areas of North America. And in some areas, they're even deemed invasive. That doesn't mean that you should go out trapping house finches like you would house sparrows. But I'm just pointing that out because again, we don't wanna cause unintended negative consequences. Ultimately, out of all of this, I just thought that this was such an interesting topic, more interesting than I had originally thought. So I'm glad I didn't give you just a flat, no, they're not a threat. Because the deeper answer gives us more reason as bird hosts to ensure our backyards or bird habitats are truly a place where our birds can thrive.
For more Bluebird resources, I have an ever-growing playlist with tips and information, and you can check that out or even consider subscribing to this channel if you want to learn more about backyard bird conservation.